What's going on ladies and gents, guns blazing back at it again, and today I'm bringing you the dankest of my beasts, the Mecha Phantom Beasts. So let's talk about this deck, the Mecha Phantom Beasts share two effects in common. First of all, their level on the field is increased by 3 for each Mecha Phantom Beast token you control. And second, if there are any Phantom Beast tokens on the board, they can't be destroyed by battle or card effects. Now, they all generate tokens in different ways. So, for example, Hamstragio, when it's flipped face up, it generates two tokens. The Penguin generates tokens by banishing any uh, Mecha Phantom Beast from your graveyard except other copies of itself. And Harlagio generates tokens whenever you sacrifice one of your other monsters with a card effect. Now, first and foremost, we take advantage of their leveling up with Beatled which in a lot of cases gets you plus 600 attack, so it's easily the best skill for this archetype. And we take advantage of the spare tokens through Creature Seizure, and this is a new PvP reward that lets you swap monsters with your opponent. We also take advantage of the tokens with Cheese Play Econ Take, and of course, tributing for SWIFT! And by the way, I really like this card. I first saw it in Dual Partners build, and it synergizes really well with Mecha Phantom because there's always something to tribute. Also, it's a wind attribute, so it goes well with Rising Air Current. And lastly, it takes care of the back row, which this deck lacks, allowing for some quick and easy OTKs. Back row is pretty standard, I'm just running things to protect my monsters and my tokens so that I can uh, make some spicy plays with them. Alright, so guys, I'll try to keep you posted on all the new updates that are coming through this week, so expect lots of uploads. Box opening on the stream tonight, so hopefully I'll see you there. Guys, have yourselves a good one, enjoy the replays, this is Guns Blazing, signing out. Alright guys, so it's uh, Crowler versus Crowler. He's running Middle Age Mechs. Beatdown is also available on Crowler, so that's why I'm running it on him. And I just lead off with a Hamstragio set and two back row. The plan is, you flip this up, you get tokens, so I can get my uh, Swift Bird Banjo out next turn. Now this innovator, this genius right here, is running the Electro in Middle Age Mechs, and he decides to pin this down. Set a card, he doesn't attack for whatever reason. Uh, I don't see the logic behind that, but this would have survived anyway since the defense is also 1600. I decide to go ahead and flip. Then I sack. And uh, turns out his back row is probably something like Mirror Wall or Wall of Disruption because he cannot chain it. So I hit him with that beat. Econ take after because, uh, you know, I get more, uh, more boost from beatdown when the token is on my side of the field still. And I just go in for uh, a buttload of damage. Alright, so this guy's rolling with the Aroma Strat, so immediately you can tell it's probably something like Hazy. Confirmed by the fact that he's gonna summon Flame Tiger turn 1. And as usual, your boy's just gonna set Hamstrajo and 2 in the back. Pretty much the best turn 1 play once you, uh, when you have a Swift Birdman Joe in your hand. Anyways, he summons Heavy Knight, hits the Hamstrat, and this is going to allow him to kill both my Hamstrat and one token. But that's fine as long as, you know, one survives. So we can run the Swift Porto Banjo. Anyways, I sack, and uh, whenever they don't chain their card and they just let it return, you can know it's not something like Econ. It's probably something to cheese in the battle step or the damage step like Mirror Wall. Or in the case of Hazy, it's probably something like Beast Rising. So you can get a read on their cards, uh, depending on how they react to the Swift Birdman Joe. Anyways, attack goes through, he's setting the cards again. Uh, this time with one more in the back. Summons a Blazing and Pachi. He has a Goka as well. So he's gonna eat up his Flame Tiger and uh, end his turn. I'm gonna summon my Erosquin. And uh, this allows me to generate a token by banishing Hamstrand. I go for the beat. And uh, both of these can attack because they're higher attack than his monsters, but unfortunately he has the wall disrupt. I decide to respond here, and uh, for some reason he changed Beast Rising, for whatever reason. Like, he doesn't have any beasts on the board right now, so it's pointless, but whatever, to each their own. And as you can see, I respond with the Windstorm so uh, I don't take the damage, and I get to kill the Blazing and Pachi, which has zero defense. Anyways, he generates the fireball token and eats it up. Uh, not the best play in my opinion. He should have just went aggressive with the token. Anyways, I super rush onto his Goka. Pick fire. Get rid of it. My field is clogged up with a bunch of zero attack monsters, but uh, with, the, with the help of beatdown, I do get some chip damage. Fuck you. Uh, 
Alright, so next up, he decides to use Flame Tiger's effect. So instead of drawing a card, you can special summon this from your graveyard. That's what he chooses to do. Attack Swift Birdman Joe. I let the attack go through. Because uh, obviously I have to clear my field up so that you know, I can get some actual monsters onto the board. Beat the that's 2400 because this is level 6 and this is level 7. Keep that in mind. He Econs. Protecting his Flame Tiger. That's okay because I got some protection of my own in the Curse of Anubis. He goes for the Penguin. This would have been protected because um, I have a token on the board. But I decide to Curse of Anubis so I can get rid of this beast. Pick up the Rising Air Current. As you can see, my Harlagio is 2900 attack. So that's plus 600 from Beatdown, and plus 500 from Rising Air Current, and the boy just scoops. Unable to withstand the girth of my dank beasts. Alright, so this one was versus uh, Bandit Keith running Balance, and it was some kind of control Beatdown deck that had a lot of back row hate. It was a spicy one. It was a, it was a nail biter, so... What happens is he leads off with his uh, Mirage Dragoon in two sets. And uh, I, ha I have no way to deal with the back row besides Swift Birdman Joe. And I don't have him, so if I want to get rid of the back, your boy has to attack. And so I just uh, start swinging. He pops Fear Ebola. And uh, just by this, you can get sort of a feel of what his face down cards are. He probably doesn't have Mirror Wall. He might have Wall of Disruption, it's not likely. He might just be waiting for a better opportunity to use it, but they're probably just, you know, cards that tip your monsters into defense mode. Anyways, Harlagio dies, but that's fine, because I get to summon my, uh, my Penguin, generate a token by banishing Harlagio, boosting me to 1900, I go for the attack, he econs, which further um, confirms that these cards don't have a, a mirror wall somewhere there. Anyways, I'm going to protect my Penguin here because if this Amazon Sage attack goes through, one of my back row gets destroyed. He goes for the attack again on the Penguin, not realizing that it's protected by the token. Now, um, I don't really blame him. No one really plays Mecha Phantom Beast, so no one really knows that. And as you can see, it gets boosted by 600 because this is level 7, this is level 6. But he has a Curse of Anubis, which he popped very preemptively, I might add. And uh, because of that, I can use my token to attack or... I can uh, use Harlajo's effect to sack the token, summon him my penguin, and attack him. He pops an Econ, which he wouldn't have had to if, you know, he actually played Curse of Anubis when it was meant to be played. But anyways, it's still looking bad for your boy. This mirror wall is not going to hold up anything because Amazon is Sage is going to kill it. And so he gets a full clear on my board. So there's not a lot of things I can pick up here to turn this duel around. But the heart of the credit card guides your boy. We pick up that cheese play. Generate the token. Now the order is a little important here. You have to beat down before you econ take. As I mentioned before. Because uh, this is boosting your penguin's level. And so after I boost. I econ take. Make the mirage and the sergeant electro kiss. Because they're both the same attack. And oh how the tables have turned. Now he's in the top deck situation. This is it. But this Lucker Dog lucks out and picks up an Electro and suicides into it. And now the pressure's on me. I break with the Rising Air Current, but this will help in the future. I decide to pocket it. And he, he picks up a back row, so brick for brick. I pick up the Hamstragio. And so I go ahead and set that. It's going to be really good if I get the flip effect off. I get a couple of tokens on the board. Anyways, he picks up Mirage. This is the same attack as my defense, but this douchebag has a Metal Mario in the back. So he Metal Mario's it up and destroys my Hamstrage, but I get to pop two tokens onto the board in attack mode, in attack position, ready to go inside, because I know I'm going to pick up something spicy. And so I pick up the Hamstrage, a perfect card for the situation, because I get to run beat down plus 300. Rising Air Current plus 500, same attack as the Mirage, but guess what, I'm protected because I have tokens on the board, the crash does not kill my airplane. And so, next pickup, he picks up another back row, 
and I'm like anything but wall of disruption. I pick up the Econ, beat the going for the finishing kill with my United Airlines, but turns out he does have the wall of disruption. Gets another set, and I pick up the nail in the coffin. The sweet do, and that gets everything returned. I replay the rising air current just because I can. Beat the dump. And once again, this is plus 600 because this is level 6. This is level 6. And so that's a lot of damage. Good game. Okay, Valiant Crowler versus Boogie Brodo, Grandpa's cards. Last matchup was a grinder, but this one not so much. This one was a quickie. Anyways, I set that Hamstrat and Curse of Anubis. Looking to make some plays with my Creature Seizure next turn. Swap in a token for one of his monsters, best case scenario. He's gonna roll card guard. So this is some kind of weird Exodia deck, but he decides to attack, I decide not to protect. I'd rather have Hamstrat die so I can get a stronger monster out on the board, and I save that Curse of Anubis. Plus this opens me up for the OTK opportunity, I seize him up with a creature seizure. Swap my token for his card guard, get that Harlajo out. I can also use Harlajo's effect to sack this token for the penguin, but it's not necessary. I already have lethal on board, plus the token um, serves to protect, so it's possibly even better. Anyways, that's a turn three quick dick. Hope you boys enjoyed the Mecha Phantom Beasts. Spoken in silence, blazing like sirens. I can bring you out of the darkness into the fiery light.